With lambdas, the Java compiler is doing something called type inference, which is very important in order to figure out what the type of your lambdas are and what are the types of the data that it deals with. So in order to illustrate that, I'm going to create a new class here, which is called type inference example. And this is going to have a main method. And here I'm going to create an inner class here to de demonstrate the string length functionality. So let's say I have an interface string length lambda. We don't have to call all our lambda interfaces as ending with lambda though, it's just something I'm doing just to make things clear. So I want to create a lambda, which is a function that takes in a string and it returns the length of that string. So I'm going to have to create an int get length and it takes in a string s now here's what happens now with my variable i can say string length lambda my lambda equals and i can define the lambda expression here so i can say string s and then this is going to return s star length, All right? This will work fine. And now I can call my lambda by doing a my lambda dot get length. Okay, so for all practical purposes, this lambda behaves as an instance of this interface. We can pass in a string here, which is hello lambda. And let me print this to the console. Okay, if I execute this, I'm going to get the length of this string. Now what's happening here is when I'm using this type to assign this lambda to this variable, the Java compiler says, okay, I need to match this lambda expression with this particular type. So it figures out what the type is based on the left-hand side over here. And there are multiple other ways in which we can do this. In the greeting class, sorry, in the greeter class, you remember here that we could pass in an argument directly to the greeter.greet method. You see here now I'm using this lambda expression, I'm putting it in a variable called lambda greeting and then I'm passing it through. What I could have done was just done this in line rather than having it be a variable. This will work too. Now what's happening is the Java compiler says, okay, this is the Lambda expression that I need to use. Now where is it going? It's going to this greet method, which takes in a greeting interface. Now the compiler tries to match this Lambda expression with that greeting interface because of the fact that you're using this as a greeting interface, right? You're basically saying, I want to use this Lambda expression as something that is a greeting, right? That's type inference for you. So the thing about having this kind of a binding between a Lambda expression and an interface is that you can actually make the syntax a little bit shorter. Now, if you remember, we removed the return from the Lambda because it's obvious what the Lambda is returning, right? We said we don't have to return something like uh, int in the Lambda expression because the compiler can figure it out. It says, okay, this is a start length, so it must be returning an int. Now this magic about having an interface that backs these lambdas is that the compiler actually has more information about this function. So it says, I see an input argument, which is a string of S. So, well, you don't really have to provide this string over here, so you can actually get rid of this. So this still works. This is also a valid lambda expression. Now I can get rid of the type information of the input arguments because this is going to this variable of type string length lambda. And string length lambda has an input argument defined as type string. So this will still work. Let me run this to make sure this still works and it still does. And finally, here's another shortcut. If you have just one input argument to your lambda, you don't have to specify the parentheses. So let me get rid of this parentheses. This is still a valid lambda. When there's one input argument, you don't have to specify the type because it figures out the type from the interface. 
you don't have to specify the parentheses you just have to specify the input argument and then do a start length so let's run this and we still get 12 and this is the shortest and the most compact way in which we can write this lambda and i promise i'm not going to remove any more code if i remove any more there's not going to be any code left so this is a valid lambda expression which is a function that takes in an argument what argument is it look at the interface it's a string so it takes in a string argument and it returns s dot length and what's the type well again look at the interface it's an int and of course the compiler can also figure out from the body itself so this is really really cool now this can go into a method argument if you have an if you have like a method which takes in a string length lambda let's let me actually write this out so let's say i have this public and i'm going to make this a static as well i call this print lambda and it's going to take in a string length lambda and it's going to do a system dot out l dot the method get length of hello lambda we have to make this a wide so what this static method does is it takes in a lambda expression and it calls it with a string and then prints the result now what i can do is call this instead of calling it right here i can take this lambda expression and call print lambda with this lambda expression right i'm just putting it right there in line and if i were to run this i'm still going to get the value 12 right this is type inference in action there are a lot of things that the compiler is inferring from your code it's kind of inferring what the input argument type is what the return type is all depending on what the type of that interface is and where you're sending that lambda expression.